Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Decryption and I hope you are well. It is common practice for characters in games to talk to themselves if the players stalk or if they're just going along with the story. So you can see here that I'm free to just roam around these cars and not really have to do anything and I've got my tutorials from last time here. It might be nice for us to set up a way for the story for the character to talk to himself to tell, him, tell the players what to do, to give informal hints almost. So for example when I start the game we could be saying something like here we are at the racetrack um, let's go and see what everybody wants to say and then that's where we toggle on down to talk to them and it's actually really simple to set up if you have something like narrative install which is what this tutorial will be based on So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open my content drawer and inside the dialogue here I'm going to create a new dialogue file called DB player. I'm going to open it up. So in the dialogue graph I'm just going to delete everything on the first node because we don't need it as per normal and then I'm going to drag off and then I'm instead of dragging off like you'd normally expect to do I'm going to instead right click and just do dialogue line for player just randomly and this is something I was taught a few weeks ago and I've been using ever since and it's fantastic it's such a cool little trick and in here I'm going to set this to be my first dialogue so I will say ah poop here we go again back at the racetrack let's go and see who the contenders are and we could easily just add some dialogue sound here and we'll just look at doing that later so let's get some sound because it's going to sound cooler if it's got dialogue so i've just opened audacity here you can use anything you want audacity audacium any other sound program and i'm just going to record some dialogue for the player temporarily ah poo here we go again back at the racetrack let's go and see who the contenders are that will do i'm not a voice actor i'm going to highlight everything and the quick thing i normally do is volume amplify so i just amplify it to bring it it up and I've got a bunch of static on mine so I'm going to highlight the static at the beginning effect noise removal noise reduction select I'm just going to choose get noise profile there are my default settings and I'm going to click get noise profile and then I'm going to highlight everything effect noise removal noise reduction I'm going to just click ok I'm going to hit effect I'm going to select reverb and in presets and settings I'm going to select factory presets I'm going to set vocal to I'm going to click apply ah poo here we go again back at the racetrack let's go and see who the contenders are and as you can see, it sounds more echoey now, almost like they were talking to themselves in their head. I'm just going to export this as a WAV into Unreal. There we go. So I've now exported it into Unreal. And if I search for the sound, we can now see we have the sound in the game like so. So how do we actually call it when we need to? And this is really easy to do. So I, I'm going to go back to my main and wherever you want it to begin, you can literally just call begin dialogue like you would normally. So when this first starts here, I know I want to start it as soon as they start the map. So I'm going to hit the blueprint and I'm going to open the level blueprint. And if you didn't watch the previous tutorial, Tutorial, all the level blueprint is is a blueprint that runs as soon as the game starts for this map it doesn't run any other map just this one so I've already got my narrative component here to begin the quest for the tutorial inputs so I'm going to drag off here and I'm going to just call begin dialogue and those keen-eyed ones of you might go but decryption you've not linked to the dialogue or how can it possibly play and you are right but what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the ID here and on the main here you've got this little arrow under begin dialogue if I tap that you have one start from ID so I'm going to paste it in here like so and what this is going to do is actually begin the dialogue and jump straight from this node directly to the node we need it to. And with that, you don't need to link it up. You can actually have several of these, which we'll look at later, and they don't need to be linked at all. You can continue things linking up from them, but you technically do not need to link it up and add a condition to it, push it down the right way. How cool is that? So the only other things we need to do to make this work is in the class defaults, we need to unspawn the camera. Now you can have a camera, but if they're talking to themselves, typically you're going to be playing the game. And I'm going to stop it from being exited and stop it from stopping the player because they don't need to do any of that and that's all I'm going to do so now if I actually assign my dialogue to the player and start it as long as I've done everything correctly we should hear him talk to himself ah poo here we go again back at the racetrack let's go and see who the contenders are how cool is that and while that's saying we have full movement over it that's pretty cool and you can apply this in any aspect at all in my legend of link game I use this quite often to guide the player where they need to go So as an example then, let's talk to Tyler Talk Johnson here and we'll say some bits like this and then it kicks us back out to carry on talking to other people. So if I was to open Audacity again and just again record some lines, well Tyler was a bit of a douche but let's see if the others are okay. There we go. And then amplify again, I'll come down and I'll just get my noise reduction, get noise profile, highlight everything, replace the noise profiling like that just to even it out a bit. Then effect, delay and reverb, reverb, presets, okay, what well, I like vocal 
two, but do listen to the others. You can click preview to test it. And then I'm going to file export again. There we go. And now I can come back into here like this and I can right click, add another player line, import my dialogue. I can find my sound. Well, Tyler was a bit of a douche, but let's see if the others are okay. There we go. And I did notice there's a little bit of a lag at the beginning of the audio, and that's only because I've kept the delay in there. So if I get rid of that, as soon as we start the dialogue, it will play it properly. And I'm just going to do the same for the beginning one as well, because that's nearly a second and a half of a delay where the character could be talking. There we go. So now, if we, again, take this ID here, and if I jump back into Tyler's dialogue, you can, anywhere you can call begin dialogue from, you can tell the player to talk to himself. So you can see down here, we've got these three ones here. I'm just going to drag off, and I'm just going to make Tyler say something just like you know whatever it seems it seems a bit of a do and then from here I can add the event I could have easily just added it to all three player nodes begin dialogue I'm going to tell it to run at the end and I'm going to paste in the start from ID and call the player dialogue let's try it again so as soon ah, as the game starts we're talking we again. back at the racetrack let's go and see who the contenders are and you can see I can jump and now if I come and talk to Tyler he'll talk to us blah 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 well Tyler was a bit of a douche but let's see if the others are okay there we go and now we've guided the player to continue talking how cool is that ladies and gentlemen one slight thing I have forgot just make sure you take free movement otherwise you can't act to move ah. there we go so I can come and talk to Tyler there we go and he'll tell us blah 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 well Tyler was a bit of a douche but there we go. let's see if the others are okay and then you could literally do it for any point you wanted to. Then eventually you can say, maybe I should go and get a car. And then you can walk up to the car and press to get in the car. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is a really little tip can help you play dialogue whenever you want if the players talk to themselves. There's so many voices you could do for this, such as NPCs talking to characters, radio comms, anything like that. <laughs> And now, ladies and gentlemen, we now have our player talking to themselves whenever they need to perform certain actions. And this works and is very good, but another big use for it is you can actually use it to guide them in quests. So I currently have this quest where you talk to these sisters, and to prove your loyalty to make sure that they can trust you, they ask you to sabotage somebody's vehicle. So you can come up to any of the cars, Tylers, Rusties, anybody, and then sabotage it, whether it's the tyres or whatever. And you can see it adds these trigger points somewhere around that when the line cast hits it, it pops saying press E to sabotage, activates a cutscene, and then that's sabotaged and then you can go back and report that you've done it. And then you can say who you specifically done it to, whether you want to lie or not. But I want to make it so when you walk up to one of these, the player dictates to himself, hmm, if I sabotage these cars or, you know, like if I sabotage their own sister's cars, that'll get them for playing unfair. Or Tyler was a bit of a douche, let's sabotage his car. Hmm, this guy's been all right, but maybe he's hiding something, you know, stuff like that. And it's really easy to do as well. So I'm just going to come and open up my player dialogue and I'm just going to come in add a new player line here and I'm just going to write some notes for each of the characters there so I've now set up some dialogue for each of the responses that I've got for my quest and I'm going to wrap them all in a comment I'm just going to comment it so I know it belongs to that quest and then all we need to do in the correct place is put the correct node in so the way the sabotage works on the quest is on my quest here it spawns a bunch of these specific blueprints called sabotage points and then it gives them each a name and tells them what to do with it and this is very specific for this quest and it might be for more quests if ever make it reused but you can see it's pretty simple it uses the same interact methods that I've got before and it comes in and once you execute it it plays the quest it does everything it needs to and finishes but what I can actually do is I can come into one of these so say the can interact here and by default this is set up in the parent sabotage point for me in my case so I'm just going to add a call to the parent and just make that return absolutely normal but what this gives me the ability to do just before it returns everything is in here I can play a specific dialogue if it exists so I'm going to add a new variable here called player dialogue line id and I'm going to set it to a type of name and then all I'm going to do in here is I'm going to right click and do get narrative component and then just begin dialogue like so and I can connect all this up the dialogue I can set to my player and the start ID I can set to the player dialogue ID like so but one alternative little change I'm just going to make is I'm going to drag the player dialogue and ID in and check if it's empty like so and if it's empty then I'm just going to not begin the dialogue at all because there's no point so it'll be a little more performant just because of it so if it's empty false it's going to begin the dialogue otherwise it's just going to go straight to the parent function like so just 
make sure both are connected. And you can really add this player dialogue line anywhere you want. So you can see now, if I actually try it, nothing will change because we've added the validator to it, which is fine. So now I can come to the event that spawns this, which for me is called any spawn sabotage point engines. And I'm using the specific engines variant. And on the execute event here, uh, I can just add it to my spawn actor. So if you ever notice a variable is not appearing in the spawn and you want it to, just simply come back to the variable and make sure you've ticked expose on spawn. Compile and save and then you can refresh your node and you will see the play log, player dialog 9 appears there. So I can promote this to a variable like so and then and then that's literally it. So now all I need to do is come in and for each individual spawn point, so we'll start with Tyler, I can grab the ID of the node that I want to play and on this specific one because I know I sometimes want it to play it, I can add it in and then I'm going to do this for each of the characters and just like that ladies and gentlemen, I've managed to adapt mine fairly easily to play that particular dialogue when I begin the quest and I hit those tasks. So now you can see if I walk up to this uh, Nakamura car, the Nakamura is just asking me to sabotage. Let's see how they like it and I can sabotage. And now you can see the dialogue's gone, their car's sabotaged, I can come back and I can begin the dialogue with them. And this should work with any of the sabotage points. So you can see if I walk up to Carlos's car, Carlos is too quiet, let's see if he can speak. And as I walk up to other people, you'll see Tyler's not the nicest. And I can do any which one I pick. So let's pick Hiroshi's car. There we go. And as you can see, it's now done. And ladies and gentlemen, for one final attempt, you also don't just have to make it the player. You can make it any of these characters. So what I'm going to do is, after you talk to Rusty here, I'm going to come and find his dialogue, and I'm going to actually duplicate it here. I'm just going to rename it to something like Rusty McAllister underscore world. So I know it's a world location, world space dialogue. In the class defaults, I'm just going to scroll down to the bottom, make sure free movement's ticked and everything else is unticked. And then I'm going to untick the spawner camera. I don't need it. I'm going to destroy every Every other dialogue he's got and I'm just going to create him a single dialogue in here and I'm just going to say god I'm so good I'm easily going to destroy that guy and then I'm going to simply copy the ID of the dialogue and then I'm going to open up his actual dialogue and then I'm going to say after all these dialogue nodes after we leave him I'm just going to add another event of begin dialogue and then just like we did before at the end I'm just going to add in his start from ID and set the dialogue to be his world space version and at the moment I'm just going to put it on the top one but eventually I'll go around and add it to others if I want to. But now this means if I walk up to Rusty and begin the di dialogue, so handle it, I was born to handle machines. Oh, then we got one more. And then he will say, God, I'm so good. I'm easily going to strike guy. And we're not even in dialogue with him anymore. We could have walked off. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is some cool uses in order, some cool uses in order to spawn dialogue. You will notice that this game is going to keep changing outside of the YouTube tutorials, but I'm going to capture all the best parts for you anyway. So thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. If you've got any suggestions for tutorials, please let me know and I will see you next time.